many of us these days are just plain frustrated. We have certain attitudes in our own personalities that we are unable to change. And they're really spoiling our lives with our wives and our children and many times with our other relatives. And certainly they're spoiling our lives with our colleagues at business or in the factory. We don't know how to overcome these wrong attitudes. Some of them are attitudes of inferiority. Some of us are horribly inferior or feel inferior compared with other people. We feel we're little nothings. We feel we're unimportant. We feel we don't mean anything to anybody. Uh, others of us feel totally incompetent. We feel we can't do anything right. We are always doing things wrong. We're always failing. We're unable to tackle anything that is really important. In all kinds of ways, there are many of us that are just frustrated to death with ourselves. It's just with ourselves. We can be frustrated with our circumstances. We can be frustrated with other people. But many of us are just fed up to the teeth with what we ourselves are. Indeed, we have come to almost hate ourselves and despise ourselves. And often we feel we'd actually get rid of ourselves if we had the courage to do it. Because we feel that that's the only thing that will ever solve the problem. We feel the only way to get rid of these ridiculous situations that we create is to get rid of the cause of that situation, and usually that is us ourselves. What you need to realize and hear, if that is your situation, and many of us feel that way in these days, if that's your situation, you need to hear this very plainly. That has already been done for you. It has. That has already been done for you. If you say to me, what has already been done for me? Is suicide? You mean somebody has already killed me? Well, not suicide. But yes, somebody has already killed you. In other words, the you that you're experiencing at this moment is not the you that any longer actually exists in reality. That is a you that was before the foundation of the world. And I know this all sounds strange to you, but please keep listening to me for your own sake, because I feel for you, for the very things that you feel are the very things that I feel and others feel. So do keep listening. But the truth is that long before the world was created, that you that frustrates you to death, that you that feels so inferior, that feels that it is unable to do anything, that was actually destroyed. Before you were even born, that was destroyed. And if you say to me, well, I, I mean, who destroyed it? I know this will bewilder you, but your creator, your creator, your maker destroyed it. The one who made you. He foresaw the way you would develop. He saw the way you would refuse to treat him for real. He saw the way that your dependence on other people and on things would twist and pervert your personality. And he was able to see all that as something that was real and actual. And seeing that, he actually put you into a person that lived with him then and that lives with him now. Because the creator of the world has a son. And his name is Jesus. And don't go to sleep on that, please. It is really true. And if you check the documented history of the first century, you'll come to the same conclusion as I have, that he is real. He is real. He is really the son of the maker of the world. And the maker of the world put you into a son before he even allowed you to be born here on earth. And he destroyed that perverted, twisted personality that you have now developed and he made you completely new again. And if you say to me, well, why was I born with this twisted one? Because that's the one you have chosen. That's the one you have chosen to develop. And he had to allow you that choice. He had to allow you to express that in your life because he cares most about you and your love and your free will. And so he gave you the freedom to do what you've done. But so that you would be able to be delivered from that, he actually also destroyed it 
and made you completely new and whole in his son, so that there is a you that is different, and that is free, and that is not filled with inferiority, a you that is balanced and sane, and a you that can live the way you were meant to live. And that you is the real you that exists now. The old you has been eliminated in timelessness. The new you is the you that is available. And it is possible for you to experience that new personality that your maker has made for you. If you say to me, how do I do that? How on earth or in heaven can I possibly experience something that is not in existence here on the earth and that exists only in the maker's mind? The answer is faith. Just faith. Now, you have to be very clear in your mind. Faith will not create this. Faith simply recognizes the fact. If this new you does not exist by the cosmic act of our creator in his son Jesus, then there's no way in which your faith can create that. Your faith simply receives that. It believes that. And the moment you believe it, that moment, the whole thing is real for you. It becomes real. It becomes real by a miracle. In other words, there is a new you that is available, as it were, on a shelf in the presence of your maker. And that new you can become real in your life by the creator's miracle, if you have faith. And faith is just believing that the creator has in fact done this. In other words, it's simply believing reality. It's believing that the creator did foresee that you would become the twisted personality that you have become and that he would destroy that in his son Jesus and would recreate you and make you completely new. Faith is believing that. Faith isn't creating that, it's believing it. And so you need to get rid of any idea that faith creates something or achieves something. It doesn't. It simply believes it. But the moment you align your own mind with what reality is, that moment reality is able to become actual in your own life. If you say to me, well, is there anything else I have to do to make it real? Yes, the Creator brings that into your life through a dynamic power that now exists on the earth. He is actually a person. He is called the Holy Spirit. And he is able to take the event that occurred in cosmic timeless eternity, and he is able to make that actual in your present temporal life. The Holy Spirit does that. And he does that when you believe that the Creator has already done that for you, and when you begin to respect the Holy Spirit himself and run your life by his directions and by his guidance. And if you do that, if you simply believe that the Maker has done this for you, and if you then begin to treat the Holy Spirit as a real person through your faith, and begin to do what he tells you to do, to speak when he tells you to speak, to think what he tells you to think, then you will find that a whole new personality will become real in your life. You will be a changed person miraculously. It is a miracle. It's a miracle that the Creator has promised will become real for you if you have faith. And faith is believing that He has done what He said He'd do in His Son Jesus and submitting to the Holy Spirit and obeying the Holy Spirit's directions in your life. It is possible. If you are out there and this is all new to you and you're wondering, what is this crazy guy thinking? Believe it. It is in the Bible. You'll find it in verses like Romans 6 and verse 6, where it says, our old self was crucified with Christ. You'll find it in other verses, like in a book of the Bible called Colossians. And you'll find it there in about the second or third chapter of Colossians, where it says, you have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. There are other verses in uh, the New Testament that say the same thing. 
in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So uh, there are all kinds of statements in that old book that show that you were actually destroyed in Jesus and made completely new in him. And that new personality can be yours this very moment by simple faith. Faith in what God has done to you in Jesus and obedience to the Holy Spirit who will make it real in your present life. Let's talk a little more about this tomorrow.